If you've clicked on this video, you're probably the woman who's confused about her cycle. And if you're not a woman, don't go anywhere just yet because if you do have women in your family, daughters, wives, sisters, you will be able to understand the cycle to know how to support them more and make your life a whole lot easier. So you've probably seen that graph, that famous graph with all the squiggly lines, all the hormones, progesterone, estrogen, and you're still thinking, what on earth does all this mean? Well, by the end of this video, I'm gonna break it all down to such a simplistic level so you will understand exactly how your body works, but not only just from a cycle perspective, how to manage your training, how to manage your food, how to manage your mood, your energy swings, absolutely everything. So lock in for the next 10 minutes and I promise you'll go away understand your body so much more. So before we go on to the actual cycle, I need to introduce you to a few hormones. In this video, we're gonna call them our characters. First of all, we've got our estrogen, which I like to call the sunshine hormone. It makes us feel happy, it releases more serotonin. This is the good guy. We've then got progesterone, which is one of our calmer hormones. It makes us feel a little bit more tired, a little bit more calm, a little bit more rested. Then we've got our spicy friend, testosterone. Not only does she make us feel a little bit more sexy, she makes us feel stronger in the gym, she helps us get our PBs. We like her a lot. We've then got FSH, which is the egg prepper. It prepares the egg throughout the whole cycle so that it's ready to release when it comes to ovulation. And then we've got LH, which basically fires off ovulation. It fires off that egg in our ovaries so that we can hopefully get pregnant. So I'm going to use these guys throughout the whole explanation to help you understand what it all means and what on earth is going on in your body. So your cycle ranges from around about 28 days to 35 days. No two women are the exact same. You might have a 31 day cycle, you might have a 28 day cycle, it totally depends. But averagely, it's around about 28 days. Now, day one starts on the first day of your period. So as soon as your period starts, that's when the cycle fully resets again. What happens on the first day of our period is the lining of our uterus shreds, which is why we see blood. In this point of your period, you are gonna be feeling a little bit groggy. Both estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest point. So remember the sunshine hormone, we're not gonna be feeling the best. We're not gonna feel our most perked up. And progesterone, which is our common hormone, we've got none of that either. So possibly the time of the month where we're just feeling the shittest, which is absolutely fine. And it's nothing to beat ourselves up over. The most important thing is to not hate on our period, not hate on ourselves throughout this time. It's just understanding how we actually deal with it. So if you're on a fat loss journey, you'll probably see your weight spike at this point in the cycle. Totally, totally normal. If we think about it, we've got more water retention from all the fluid that's building up in our uterus before it sheds out. We do get a little bit more hungrier at this point in our cycle, just because if you think about it, our bodies are preparing for babies at this point. So the phase before this, which is the luteal phase, which I'll explain more towards the end of the video, is the phase where we're prepping for baby. So when it actually comes to our period, we've got all that water retention. You might be feeling a little bit more bloated and your body craves more food. So you probably just have a little bit, few more snacks here and there, which means your weight is gonna spike. Totally normal women, do not freak out. With your training and energy levels, you'll probably find that your training actually feels okay. The phase before this, which is the luteal phase, you'll probably find that your training isn't actually as good in this phase. But as soon as you come in your period, it might just be the first one to three days where you are feeling a little bit shit and you feel a little bit weaker in the gym. But as soon as you reach day three to five, you'll start and pick up again and feel in yourself. Now, the most important thing when you're going through this is not to just throw the towel in straight away, but also not beat yourself up if you can't hit the same weights, hit the same workout as what you did a few weeks ago. You've probably seen all over Instagram, people are promoting cycle syncing and doing different workouts on each week, each month. This is not needed at all. And to be totally honest with you, it's just gonna make it so much harder to keep up with. All you need to do is just listen to your body on that day and just do the best that you can. If you've got a really heavy weighted session scheduled in, maybe just swap it out for a yoga session or just go really, really light on the weights. Or even just swap out your training all together and just go on a nice long big walk. It's not about not training on your period or just forcing yourself through it. It's just having that happy medium where you just understand your body for what it is understanding that it's not going to be the same every single week and just doing what's right on that moment and that day and sometimes you have a really really good week of your period and sometimes it will absolutely break you no two months are the same and no two women are the same so you've just got to understand your body on that month and just do what works best for you Okay. Then we head into phase two, which is our follicular phase. It's the 10 to 14 day period when we are feeling our absolute best selves. Our estrogen is starting to rise a little bit. So as I said before, it's our sunshine hormone. It makes us feel good. It releases serotonin, which is like our happy hormone. So that rises. FSH starts to rise as well, which is where our egg is being prepped for our next 
period and testosterone is starting to creep into the picture. So what you'll find just after your period is your best time of the month to absolutely go for it. You are absolutely killing the gym. You're feeling strong. You're not feeling tired anymore. You're not feeling bloated. Your hunger levels have evened out again. You're not wanting to raid the fridge every two seconds. And you are starting to just feel like a normal human being. My recommendation in this phase when it comes to your training is to push a little bit harder in the gym. If you can feel that you've got this energy, if you feel like you've got this push, make sure you push. Go for the PBs, go for the HIIT workouts. Push yourself a little bit further on the sprints on that run because this is where your body is thriving. And the scientific reason for this is because when we come over to phase three, which is ovulation, it's basically our body's perfect time of the month to make babies. So from a survival standpoint, our bodies are wanting to make us more attractive in phase two. It's wanting to make us stronger. It's wanting to make us a little bit more sexier, a little bit happier. So when we come round to phase three, which is ovulation, and the egg is released from our ovaries, we want to be the most fertile possible so that our partner or whoever we make love with is ready for the best possible chance to make babies. That is like the scientific standpoint, but if you're like me and you, we don't want babies yet. This is just the point where we need to be absolutely killing it on every single part of our life. Business, gym, making good decisions. We are on our A game at this point. And, but if you've probably noticed that two to three days a month, you're feeling like your absolute best, it's probably because you're around the ovulation point. This is where testosterone is the absolute highest. And this is normally known as like the male hormone. Hormone, but us females do get it as well. It makes us feel a little bit more fiery, a little bit more sexy, again, for that reproductive reason. But for us gym girls, we can use that to our advantage to actually push harder in the gym, push harder on our runs, get a hit workout in, and just feel our absolute best selves. You'll also notice at this time of the month that your libido is a lot higher as well. And this is something that I wanna really normalize because your libido as, as a female is not gonna be the same every single week of the month. And you've probably noticed this as well, but around day 14, you are feeling sexy. You are wanting to, you know, do all those things that, that the adults do. But that's because our testosterone is a lot higher. There's an actual reason behind it. You'll often find when it comes to your weight as well, if you're tracking your body weight throughout the month, that your body weight is actually at its lowest at this point. You're feeling lean, you're feeling more muscular. Like I said, it's probably my favorite time of the month. It's, it's a great time. Now, all of these first three phases are at the first 14 days of the month. The last phase, which is our luteal phase, and possibly the most inconvenient phase is the last 14 days of the month. So we've basically got half of the month feeling like good, feeling on top of our shit, feeling great. And then half our month, not feeling as great. But I want to change your perspective on that because on social media, we're always putting down the luteal phase. We're always saying that it's a horrible time of the month, that it goes against everything we want to do. We're always feeling like shit, but that's probably because we're just taking the wrong approach with it. If you're a little bit more in tune with your body and know how to manage the expectations around your little affairs, you'll actually be able to enjoy it a lot more and it's probably not gonna be as much of an inconvenience as what it is right now. In the luteal phase, if you remember our friend progesterone, the sleepy hormone, this is gonna shoot all the way up and start to rise. Estrogen, our happy hormone, is gonna start and decrease. Now, what does this mean when it comes to us? Well, slowly but surely from day 14 to the end of the month, around about day 28, we're gonna start feeling a little bit less happy and a little bit more calm, a little bit more sleepy, maybe a little bit more snappy. So if you're wondering why for probably a good week of the month, you're feeling really irritable, you're feeling really snappy, you wanna tell your partner to fuck off a little bit more than usual, then this is because your progesterone has increased and you're in your luteal phase. Now, what this also means when it comes to training and your weight loss, your training might feel a little bit different compared to the first part of the month, but I don't want you to use this and think it is always gonna feel different and it's not always gonna feel the same because most of the time until really, really close to our period, it doesn't really affect us that much, but you'll probably start to notice a few symptoms here and there drop in in this phase. So you might have the odd day that you feel a little bit weak. You might have the odd day that you feel a little bit tired. Hitting your PB might not feel as easy as what it used to be. You'll still be able to do it, but it just might not feel as easy. You might not have as much oomph to be able to get it. So my recommendation for this phase is to just expect it coming. Don't put yourself down. Don't think that you're a piece of shit. Don't think that there's anything wrong with you. Just expect the change and you'll be in line with your expectations and you'll not feel so shit because you know it's gonna happen. And work with your body. Go to bed a little bit early if you need a little bit more sleep. If you are feeling a little bit bloated, don't beat yourself up over it. Just wear a baggy jumper and get on with the day. If you feel a little bit hungrier, dial in your high volume foods, your higher protein, your higher fiber, because that's gonna help you keep you fuller for longer. And the reason why your body's doing this in the luteal phase is because it's preparing for your body to make babies. At a really basic level, the feed 
female body is here to make babies. The whole cycle is surrounded and keeping us alive and keeping us in the right system to be an ultimate baby maker. That's basically what's happening to our bodies. So as soon as it goes through ovulation and it realizes that a baby isn't there, the uterus lining sheds again, and then boom, we come in our period. And that's why we come in our period and it's a signal that we are not pregnant. So just as a really high level overview, day one, we come in our period. That's the first day of our cycle. The uterus line is built up throughout the whole of our luteal phase. And then it starts shedding on our period when it realizes the egg hasn't been fertilized and it's ready to be released again. The uterus lining sheds down and we're on the first part of our cycle, which is our follicular phase. We're feeling good, we're feeling fiery. It's the best time of the month. We're hitting our PBs. We're not feeling mega hungry. We're feeling energized. We feel like we're going to take on anything. Then it gets to our ovulation where we're basically, we're just the most fertile. We get spikes of testosterone. We feel a little bit more sexy. Our libido is higher. You're feeling stronger in the gym. Then then after a short two or three days of that, we're straight into our follicular phase where slowly but surely our energy levels start to go a little bit down. We're starting to feel a little bit more calm, a little bit snappier because in essence, our body is preparing to build a whole human being. And once it realizes that human being isn't being built, boom, we go straight back to the start of the cycle again. We get our period and this cycle just goes on and on and on and on. And if you're at this part of the video and you're thinking, I don't have a clue what day of the cycle that I'm on, I would 100% recommend you downloading the cycle tracking app. I've used the Flow one previously, which is really, really good, but I actually just use my Garmin now, which has a cycle tracker in it. And I just log how I'm feeling every single day and it predicts my cycles, which is really, really good. If you do have a smartwatch, it probably has that on there already. But before I go, I'm just gonna answer some quick fire myths that you're probably all wondering that you've been fed on social media, fed throughout your upbringing that I just want to break down. Myth number one, I can't train on my period. Period. Yes, you can. You can train every single day of the cycle. You just need to adapt it with how you're feeling. Some periods you will, you'll still be feeling fire and you can still train as normal. Some periods you might have to skip a whole week and just do some walking. Myth number two, weight gain before a period is fat gain. It isn't at all. Most of the time, it's just our water retention. It's our uterus lining. It's the bloat that's built up in the luteal phase that makes our weight go higher. Sometimes it's an increase in carbs for energy maybe an increase in the snacks that we have, an increase in food volume, because you will be feeling hungrier, but this will normally level out with the rest of the month, which means you're not gonna be gaining fat. It's just a little bit of fluctuation in your body weight that will average back out again as soon as it's over. Myth number three is that it's really normal for your period to be excruciatingly painful. This is not true at all. Your period should be something that is manageable. It's not something that should tear you apart every single month. And if yours is, I would 100% recommend you going to like a female practitioner or a doctor to to figure out why that is because it could be a sign of hormonal fluctuations or dysregulated hormones that I would 100% suggest you get sorted out but your period being like excruciatingly painful is not normal at all it should be manageable throughout every single part of the cycle but you might just feel changes in the way that you feel in day to day myth number four cravings mean that you're weak and you don't have much willpower this is not the case at all if we compare ourselves to men they have a 24 hour cycle every single day that restarts. So they're not getting really, 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 really heavy cravings at one point in their cycle and then feeling the absolute opposite on the other end of their cycle. Our bodies are working differently to men. So when we get cravings, it's not that we're just lacking willpower, we can't withstand them. It's literally our body saying, hello, we're preparing for a baby, give me more food. I need more sugar, I need more food, I need more supplies to prepare for building a whole human being. That's what our bodies are saying. So don't put yourself down for it, but work with your body when it comes to it. So give it a little bit more food. Increase your calories by 100 to 200 if you are finding it a little bit unmanageable. It's not that you lack of willpower, it's literally our bodies telling us that we need more fuel for the journey it thinks it's, it's about to go on, i.e. pregnancy. Myth number five is that PMS, which is our premenstrual symptoms, are just a myth and we shouldn't feel them and we're just over-exaggerating them. This is obviously false. Like I've just explained this whole video, a mixture of progesterone going up, estrogen going down. We've literally got hormones in our body controlling the way that we're feeling. It's not in your head, it's actual science as to why it's happening. And last but not least, myth number six is that missing a period every so often is absolutely normal. This is not normal at all. And I've definitely been there before. I've definitely missed my period. And it's been down to stress, lack of sleep, maybe poor lifestyle choices, 
or it could be down to something like PCOS, endometriosis. But if you are continually missing your periods, again, this is something that I would suggest you go and see a doctor about or a female women's health practitioner to help you with your hormones and figure out what the hell's going on. And that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope this explanation has helped you understand your body a lot more. I know when I was a teenager, when I was at school, I seen that graph that they put on the whiteboard of that hormone graph and I never knew what it meant until I broke it down, until I did the research myself to understand why my body works the way that it does, being more in tune with my body and it's my goal to help all you women out there to understand yours as well. Whether you're in your teens, whether you're in your 20s, when you, whether you're in your 30s or your 40s, understanding this is going to be your superpower to actually understand your body and working with it throughout the month rather than beating yourself up all the time and just feeling like shit. And if you do have a sister, a best friend, a mum, an auntie that you feel like should see this video to understand their body a little bit better, send them it over and hopefully we can just help more of the girls understand everything that they're going through on a monthly basis. As always, thank you so much for clicking on this video and spending the 10 minutes with me. I hope it helped you out a load. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week. And I hope you've just got way more reassurance now and understanding your body. Bye guys, and I'll see you next time.